Now, the reason uh, for this, because I'm I'm still kind of just taken back by Ryan Shear promoting of like selfless, like just shameless, you know, like how do you say it? Uh, going to the mat or for this, for these, the squad it, it, to yeah, the point they, to where I can't even, with them. yeah, <laughs> to where, to the point to where like, if you're willing to do this now to me, your reporting is suspect to me because Look what you're willing to do. Look what you're willing the 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 scenario you're willing to craft through your reporting. Let's not forget, he didn't just tweet this. He didn't just tweet this. So for me, that's where it spun. And the official title is the pseudo left media refuses to tell the truth about progressive uh, Democrats. Now, why are we listening to them as a as a working class? Uh, uh population why are we listening to these professional managerial class types um and now let's move to the tweet i i think that's a short preface enough now let's move to the actual uh tweets that i want to show you here not that one let's go down so what i did nick all i did was simply type in ryan grimm the word AOC, if you call it a word or the name, and and the word squad. And the trove of tweets that you can pull up where Ryan Grimm is literally defending the squad in AOC, it is uh, preposterous. So pseudo left can't be trusted. All right, I think that's good enough title. So let's get into this. Now, as a receipt, I want to just show a couple of tweets. And I purposely wanted to get tweets that wasn't current so that we can see that this has been going on for a while. And this is the reason why we can't trust them. Now, let's listen. Let's look at this tweet here by Ryan Knight, friend of the show. Nick is in here, too. You can see you participated in this tweet, too. But let's make this a little bit bigger. So let's check this out. So this is Ryan, and he says, May 1st, 2021, so now both Dave Waggle and from the Washington Post and Ryan Grimm from the Intercept have come after me for criticizing AOC and the squad for not taking a bold enough approach against Joe Biden and the establishment. Why are these reporters so worried about criticism? of the Democrats. And I'm going to show you Ryan's tweets in response, but think about that, Nick. Ryan didn't know we were going to do this, this, this stream and to, to this stream, you know, a year later, a year and more later, think about how I'm able to pull up bunches of tweets where this guy, Ryan and others, I'm sure other, I mean, I can find others. I, I was looking at, uh, for example, uh, crystal ball I was looking at Kyle Kalinske and they still, they have tweets also where they're defending these people. And the question is, is that their role? Aren't they presenting their role as I'm telling you the truth, uh, you know, calling balls and strikes down down the middle? Or isn't that the veneer that they have given everybody? But then we have all of these receipts, and now I'll scroll down, of them dis defending. And let me see, this is what you say. Ryan McGowan was right. The Democratic Party is uh, a cult, and that includes AOC and her media simps. <laughs> Does that bring back memories? Is that why you said it? Yeah, I, was, I don't know why I feel like this. That sounds about right. I've been young. <laughs> and this is why um, uh, this is why AOC can do shit like vote for war. She can union bust, and then she don't even feel the need to address criticism. Or At to all. answer questions or explain her logic because she knows she has media sense and her coat will apologize apologize for her no matter what. She knows that she has people that will do media tours for her, like Ryan Grimm, just one example, that will apologize for her actions. 
So she could just uh, sell out, uh, do her magazine photo shoots, her interviews on, on The View, <laughs> uh, without any uh, tough questions or any explanation of uh, on how she actually working for the people. But go ahead, CJ. Yeah, so here we is... We talked to our boy Rome in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, I have, I see, I just want to read some Rose. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He said, I have, I have Rose's number. We texted all last year. We were trying to get her on, but I know that uh, we had some issue with scheduling. But, but go ahead, CJ. But shout out to Rome in the chat. Yeah. So, so here's another tweet. Um, this is the original. Uh, this is the one I thought I was reading before. Where is a string where we can see Ryan's talk, speaking? And this is the one I thought I was reading. AOC quote: Biden has exceeded our expectations. End quote. Reality, bomb Syria, kids still in cages, no Medicare for all, no $15 minimum wage, lied about 2K checks, privatizing war in Afghanistan, no student debt cancellation. And now we can actually say that's true again, Nick. <laughs> we can say that's true again. AOC is a sheepdog for the right wing. Hallelujah, uh, Ryan Graham. Democrat going ham. Now, is Ryan Grimm is not tagged anywhere here, Nick. <laughs> Ryan Grimm is not tagged anywhere, but the nigga, but he got to come right out. Here he goes. <laughs> oh, you got <laughs> <had> expectations of him? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Now, man. now, now, let's, let's, let's take that. Let's take his, because I like how you pointed that out. I, I'll read it to you. Just to, I'll read it. Just yeah, so go people, ahead. This uh, just case people are not uh, watching. Uh, Ryan replies, "So you expecting him to sign Medicare for all and act a fifteen dollar minimum wage, stop all bombings and all the rest of this? What about Joe Biden's career? Gave you that high level of expectation? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! The audacity! And you know why? It's so many different levels that that's such that's this is such smug and such like uh." Such a elitism mean. because it's like so let's take it so you expected him to sign medicare for all and that 15 dollars minimum wage so he's saying you are throwing aoc you're mad at aoc because you expected all of these you expected joe biden to sign all of these things no we're expecting aoc to fight for all of these things but he has to come in and say, what about Joe Biden's career gave you as to say, Nick? He knows what aren't you doing. Yeah. Aren't you being a little ridiculous that you think he would even do these things that you're listing? That's what he's trying to point out, that you are being ridiculous. Really? Because isn't this what AOC said? Yeah, because Ryan is criticizing uh, Ryan Knight, that is. Uh, AOC saying Biden exceeded his expectations. So think about the psychology of Ryan Grimm seeing someone calling out AOC for being weak on someone that you, in your own comment, in that last comment, you mentioned how Joe Biden was a piece of shit his entire career. So shouldn't AOC be harder on that person? You see Ryan's first reaction to lash out on someone who's going like, Ryan, nice tweet, 3,000 likes. Over 3,000 likes. Ryan saw that. He probably saw this like, this motherfucker going viral. <laughs> let, me, let me get this motherfucker. They are class loyal. They're, and this is what our being, we are begging you. We are begging you guys. Can we become as class loyal as these people are? You see, the same loyalty Please. <laughs> that Ryan Graham has to AOC is the loyalty that we should have to our neighbors. For the people who have, for our, our, our working class brothers and sisters who are like mine. But anyway, I think I want to send you guys off with that message. No, that's such a good point that I didn't even think about. You just blew my mind in the stream. Like when you said it's such a great point because you can't have it both ways. You're saying here, Ryan, that why are, why are we expecting Biden to do all this stuff? Then why is she saying he's exceeding our expectations? Yeah, you can't the have it both ways. Yeah, go ahead, Nick. <laughs> and I was like, where's your critique of that? The point is the you should be critiquing AOC for having a seated expectations of the guy you claim that we shouldn't have no expectations of. But there, he, instead of lashing out at AOC for this blatant hypocrisy and her leaning the left off the cliff, he get mad at people who point out AOC's flaws. So this is what uh, Jimmy and this is what we warn people about regarding Ryan Grimm. And people still pretend that he's this good faith person just calling it out. He says, no, he has an agenda. He has an agenda. 
He wouldn't get as much anti-establishment clout as possible and then use that as a wedge to attack activists and attack people who critique the strategy of taking over the Democratic Party. Go ahead, CJ. I just wanted to get your guys is how both of you chimed in in what he said. Um, Did I chime you know, in? I want you, yeah, I'll get both of your responses. So uh, I didn't expect AOC, who ran for Congress, to fight back against the corrupt establishment to start running cover for it this quickly. I expected the squad to fight as hard for the working class as Joe Biden and the Democrats uh, fight for Wall Street. They have massively disappointed. There's no reply, sir. Of course not. Uh, and then you, this is where you chime. I love bringing up your tweet, like out, out of like out of history. You're like, well, I said that shit. Uh, AOC dragging progressives to the right, and she is. I wonder if anybody. Uh, yeah, that's what I was. Uh, oh, I hate when they do that. They don't let yeah, you. Yeah, Biden's older. Biden's yeah. older. You got people yeah. <laughs> like the AOC Justice Democrat movement is apologizing for corruption that we used to be fighting against. Like we used to, the AOC and uh, Glenn Greenwald pointed this out on the show. Like she had a tweet during her campaign calling out the Democratic Party connection with the genocidal state of Israel. She went from that to never talking about this shit ever again. Like, and then they look at us like we're crazy. Like I see, like you guys have been dragged to the right by de- by defending the party that you used to harshly criticize. AOC went from saying that Joe Biden and her shouldn't be in the same party. Now he's she's saying that he that he has seen the expectations from Mr. Jai Paul giving him an A. You guys are not dragging the Democrat Party to the left. They dragged you guys to the right. You guys are voting for military spending packages. You guys are praising frackers and capitalists who are spending ICE. AOC under Donald Trump was uh, tweeting abolish ICE every week. <laughs> Hashtag abolish ICE every fucking week. When Donald Trump was president, Joe Biden president, not a goddamn peep about Biden administration abuse of DHS. You guys know, and I reported on this a while ago, there was uh, migrants under uh, ICE of uh, uh, detention camps that was going on hunger strike during the Biden administration. And they were going on hunger strike because the treatment was so bad and the, and the, and the DHS and ICE officials wasn't giving them medicine. And it was exposing them to COVID-19. So they went on hunger strike. And that hum- that happened under Joe Biden. Where's AOC at the border crying about this? So you guys get, didn't drag the party to the left. The Democrat Party dragged you guys to the right. And that's what my comment was referring to. But go ahead, CJ. And Ryan's reporting on AOC and progressives, how are we to take that? There's reporting. Literally, think about it, Nick. This is this guy. Like, let's say you didn't know Ryan, but you saw this person. Oh, this guy obviously likes AOC. This is what you would think. If somebody is in our audience right now who has no idea Ryan, no idea AOC, and you're just looking at us pointing out how he's bringing up the tweets, you're going to go, he's just, yeah, this person obviously like him. And then I turn around and said, that's a journalist. (laughs) What do you think he's going to write about AOC or the progressives? Do you think, do you really believe people? human a human can now turn around and pivot to be unbiased to this group of people do you really believe that so look at this fucking tweet uh he said a lot of people in these reply and these replies had unreasonably high expectations of democrats right i didn't vote democrat because i didn't have any expectations and this is why it's so important what we do exposing people like AOC as the frauds they are because we have no expectation of Democrats. So we have to explain explain to people that wasting time propping up AOC and the Justice Democrats is a waste of working class resources time and time. That is why it's worth calling out AOC because of our expectations for the Democratic Party so low. Our expectations for the Democratic Party so low, we know that even if AOC was working in good faith, which she, she is not, the project will still be doomed to failure. You guys will still be dragged to the right. That is why we are post-partisan. That is why we post-duopoly. Because we have no expectations of the Democratic Party. But he's trying to have it the other way around, where he's trying to say the people who criticize Democrats are the people who have, 
have expectations of the Democratic Party. Now, CJ, what's the question we always ask on this show? Who does Who this ideology does it serve? <laughs> Who does it serve? What does it benefit? Exactly. The ruling class. Everything this motherfucker projects out there in the ethosphere benefits the ruling class. We criticize the Democrats so people can have the low expectation of the Democratic Party that we do. He trying to pretend that if you criticize Democrats, that's because we have too much expectation. To these people, sky is red, up is down, <laughs> love is hate, war is peace. They literally gaslight people to death. This is gaslighting to death. And it's, it's unreal. unbelievable that people think this guy is their <laughs> faith. Because Ryan is a smart guy. I think even if we hate him, you can you can he he educated, he he th- he thinks a lot, right? <laughs> Now he uses his intellect. He thinks to try. a lot. <laughs> he uses his intellect. Uh, he thinks a lot. <laughs> to try. He uses his intellect. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you know, these motherfuckers stay wrong sick all the goddamn time. So he's he pretty damn smart. <laughs> he's pretty damn smart on his fucking thinking. So he uses uh, intelligence to try to trick uh, the workers who he believes dumb. Because when he he does that shit. Well, he he's trying to convince people that the squad and the Democrat Party are pro workers by breaking the rail strike. That's him not believing that. That's him yes. saying, "I'm think you're so dumb. I'm going to use my in, 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 uh, superior intellect to trick you and to believe some stupid shit that I know your dumb ass will believe." <laughs> That's why I that is literally he tried to do. That's literally what he tried to do. You guys are some dumb workers. I'm the Washington bureau chief of the fucking intercept. So I'm smarter. You're dumber. And this is the the gospel as by a journalist and which he's written to me. I mean, I don't want to speak on that. Let's let's read some of some of the replies. So in that in reply to this, a lot of people in these replies have unreasonably high expectations of Democrats. Why is it a journalist's job to literally make that point, Nick? You know how he says, oh, it's not my role? How come it's never his role when it comes to this part? How is this a journalist's role, Nick? But it's his role to not be in it when it comes to critiquing AOC. Anytime we point out great points to, and then we say, answer that question, well, it's not my role. Yeah. Let's read, let's read some replies. Ryan, I am... Ryan, and this is uh uh this is Brant is tired of emoji handles. <laughs> Ryan, I really am in good faith asking what your angle on this is, because everybody's saying like, why the fuck are you even chiming in, sir? You're directly targeted by uh you're you you directly targeted both MPP and the Green Party just in the past six months. You're saying you're here, you're saying here we had too high expectation of Democrats, but you attacked FT, uh, forced to vote, and strategies to to oppose the Democrats. Then she, uh, then this person goes on, I don't want to say she, so please tell me, what were your expectations? What do you suggest? What in all reality, is your strategy because I'm trying to think the best of your input. This person is trying to give Ryan the benefit of the doubt of not. I'm trying. He's this person is saying I'm trying to give you the benefit of doubt that you're not here just to shield for these people. But I really can't find fault in people who think you're acting in bad faith as targeted opposition based on your actions so this person is literally trying to say i'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt ryan that you're not what people are saying ryan so explain to me what are you and he answers the question that's why i'm reading this specific tweet because he does answer the question and I, i mean he does reply so this is his reply here Literally, he could have just wrote that and he could have get destroyed just off of that. You mean in a democracy, in a republic where you're supposed to vote and then 
the people who are representing you are supposed to deliver on what you want, you are saying don't have expectations of politicians. Who does that serve? Who does that serve? Who? Like, I'm, I'm starting to get upset, Nick, because people who aren't part of the, who aren't reaping the benefits of fossil fuel profits and all this type of shit. Why are you doing this? Why, why are you being such a shield for the ruling class and their minions? Why are you doing this? It's really infuriating because you aren't benefiting the way they are. So why are you willing to throw your life, your, your career for this? It's truly disgusting. And also on top of that, considering Ryan comes from, from poverty, he said, when he was on the show. Vastly different how he lives now, he said. So that, to me, makes it worse that you even came from these more uh, impoverished communities, working class communities, and now you're keeping those communities exactly where they are. Imagine if somebody kept you fucking bitch where you were. It's completely infuriating, Nick. Yeah, what's that shit? Yeah, let's let's let me finish this shit, man. It is infuriating. They're not in it for you. They have to be forced to do everything and it has to be in their interest. Why would a what thing that they would do for us, Nick, that is in the interest of politician? This is mumbo jumbo, Nick. This is mumbo jumbo. What the fuck does that even mean? They have to be forced to do everything and it has to be in their interest. Don't sit back and hope others fight for you. Fight for yourself and keep pushing them. <clears throat> you want to chime in before I get go through from from this shit, man. This is uh yeah, it is. There's just more evidence. Depressing. Than, uh, it's depressing. It's depressing. I just don't. I I just, I'm truly sure don't understand people who don't see it through his acts. Um, I just I just wish we was at. I want the the working class to be as loyal to each other as these people are as class loyal to um, the people they have access to, right? So independent media on the left was supposed to counter access corporate media journalism. We substituted that with majority report who weak on the squad because they get interviewed with Ilhan Omar. We got Ryan Grimm and these people who do active uh, asset journalism right in front of our face. Like, that that's that's not how we roll, and I think that's what the working class got to fight against. But go ahead, CJ. Do you really think Ryan Graham is all for general strikes, like he says here in this tweet, Nick? We can, because now we have we have we have the we have the benefit of time, Nick. April twenty fifth, I'm all for general strike. What is he out doing now for AOC and the squad? Isn't he shielding them from stopping what could have been a general strike when he was on uh, Bad Faith with uh, Shama? He had a violent reaction when he started talking about general strike shit. Get serious. Are you talking? This is the Railway Act. But you see how he just says shit. Oh, I'm all for general strikes. I'm all for this general strike. But like he can't even say it right. This don't even put this like you can't you don't you, like you get what I'm saying like he can't even have the vernacular right Nick because this is not even it's not natural I'm all for this general strike but to do so you need to have at least double union concentration and for that you need the pro act you need to invest in the duopoly you see how he brings it back anybody dismissing that dismissing that is making a general strike. Much harder. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Yeah, this can be the last tweet, man, right here, because this says it right you here. Can't this motherfucker. I, just, I literally can't. Like this, I mean, this is the breaking points left. Like, remember you had Crystal Ball, um, who said that uh, the, the Democrat Party was the better vote, Biden was the better vote, just because it stands on labor. 
I think she said that on the Vanguard. Yeah, she did. And then she said that, and literally Biden broke up a strike a few weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh... man, people just say shit, man. They just say shit. So I can't with these motherfuckers, man. I wish I could just say shit and, and have credibility. Like, we got to, I'll, I'll research, I'll make sure I, I try to get as much facts and uh, knowledge to you guys and discipline to you guys. They just say shit. That would no material. That would no Marxist material now to dust motherfucker, man. 